Hi everybody, Luke Galant here from the YT624EJ Snowblower Maintenance Channel. I get a lot of requests on this uh, height adjustment shock or whatever it is. And uh, mine, knock on wood, is still working after six years, going on sixth year. But let's take it out and see if we can see kind of how it works and if there might be anything wrong with mine so far. So here we've got an adjustment nut uh, that goes up to the handle. Uh, so the adjustment nuts for the cable that uh, releases it. Now in the book it says that the measurement between the nut and the shoulder there is supposed to be 11 millimeters. I've got 12 and a half. Uh, 12 and a half between this nut and this shoulder. So I've written that down and uh, what I'm going to do now is loosen the nut. And get this pulled back. So that should loosen that whole thing right up. And then I guess um, we'll see how it's assembled here. So what we'll do is actually get the cable to come out of the handle end and get the cable pulled out of the handle side. So fortunately there's just enough slack for that. All right, so now that I got that off, there's a nut behind this rubber that you want to undo completely. And then it's going to fall off the end of the threaded piece. It's taking a while. So now I think it's off. I can get the cable out from there. Then I should be able to pull this whole thing out. Oh yeah, I should be good now. So there you go. I've got that out. So here we have how this looks behind there. It's a nut with a washer. And then on the other, there's a ball that hangs onto the mechanism. So what I'm going to do now is um, get the top cotter pin and the bottom cotter pin out with some pliers. <laughs> That is one stiff cotter pin for sure. All right, so we've got both cotter pins out. So we're gonna take out both pins and both washers. Now, there's probably some tension in here. I can feel that there is some for sure. All right, so we'll put that to the side. Then down below, pull this pin out. So that'll be the bottom pin. So we got this out, let's get it on the bench, check it out. All right, so we're gonna get going on this. Um, I'll get this boot off first of all. So maybe just pushing this boot from the this side here. I've got a very minor tear in mine, so I might try some black tape or something uh, to patch that up. Or I got some rubber glue actually. I might give it give it a try. Then we've got this. Now, um, what I'm gonna do is take the bottom piece off so I can get this off and get this seal out. There's a seal in there that's busted. So I'll do that now. Just trying to understand how this works here. Okay. So yeah, it's some type of compression mechanism. So let's get a, what looks like a 14 millimeter. So I see one, two threads. So there's two threads exposed. So I'm gonna try this again here. Okay, now that I've got that, I can get the bottom on done. Get the nut off. So I'm gonna put that to the side. I'm going to take this off. Now in here, there's a seal. And what I've noticed just now is that the seal is completely finished. So what I'm going to do is get the seal out. Um, you can see that the spring on the inside of the seal is loose there. Now I'm going to just try prying this out. There we go. So there's our seal. There we can see how badly that seal is torn. All right, so I've been playing around with this. To me, it doesn't look gas actuated as much as mechanical. So if we push here, we've got this, the cylinder thing come out. You know, you can't really dismantle it because it's, it seems compressed here. It's pressed and pressed and pressed. So one thing I see that could potentially happen is this plastic could get wedged into the slot here. So I see here that if it was stuck in there, you may not be able to open this up, but generally it looks like it should work for a while now. I think it wouldn't hurt to, uh, if th this has to remain clean, obviously, and putting a tiny bit of oil here, which I'll do now. So putting like, say a little bit of engine oil here, which we can do, and then just wipe it around, kind of push that in there. Now this shaft does turn inside. So one of the things I'll do is get a toothbrush and clean this out. So I'll do that now. Okay, so that's clean now. I'm not sure how this works inside, but to me, there's no reason it shouldn't work for a while. But I think if this seal is no good, you might end up getting some stuff in there and scoring it. So I'm gonna take a bit of compressed air now. 
I'm supposing it, it comes in and latches here, but doesn't seem very robust. So I'm gonna go inside now and wash this. Okay, so I've washed this. I'm gonna use some uh, Loctite 404 rubber glue to try and glue it back. Will it last? Probably not, but it's always fun gluing stuff, so use a Q-tip to get it in there. Doing maintenance with kids around is always awesome. She's upstairs somewhere, so I'm gonna put this in the vise like that temporarily. Okay, so I looked at my inventory. I don't have this seal. I think it's a 20 by 10 by 6. So I'm going to see if I want to order that from Yamaha or order it from the local seal place. All right. So I take the snowblower uh, out for maintenance. Check out this uh, height adjustment and I end up with a driveway full of snow. So what are we going to do? Time to replace this cylinder with a wooden dowel. I'll make some cuts and install it. That's it. So just as a note, for anybody that maybe has a broken cylinder and is waiting for a new one, you can use a wooden dowel. Now, the key measurements for these wooden dowels, if you're gonna do it, to have the blade of the snowblower be right on the ground, is 365 millimeters from center to center of these holes. And the holes can be maybe 11 and a half millimeters in diameter. I used a one inch dowel. Um, so you'll have to uh, kind of sand away the ends here or else it won't fit, but the other end is okay. We're going to proceed now with reassembly. The uh, Loctite rubber glue seems to have held this decently. We'll see if it lasts. As far as the seals are concerned, here's the old Yamaha one that's failed. And I actually ordered a new Yamaha one, by the way, it was $13. And then I ordered the SKF kind of comparable one and it was $3. So the shaft is exactly 10 millimeters. The stock Yamaha seal is about nine and a half on the front, maybe 9.25 on the back. Whereas this SKF one is gonna be 9.6, but on the back, 9.2. So I'm gonna try using the SKF one. I had reassembled this temporarily. So I'm going to take it apart now to so remove this. I'm gonna put a drop of oil actually in here to make this seal. So I'm gonna use the SKF seal. I'll keep the Yamaha one for maybe later. So a little bit of oil on the perimeter and this seal should just go in. Now the seal goes letter side down and we should be able to get this in by hand without needing a driver. So just push it in and there we've got the seal sitting in the bottom. So now we're gonna get this rubber contraption on. I'm actually gonna oil the inside of it a little bit to get it to slide more easily because it was actually a pain getting off. So the rubber actually goes on from the top. So what we're going to do is get some grease on the inside of our seal. So preventing this from being dry should help. Then we are going to, it's actually quite tight. So what I'll do is I'll, so I'm gonna get the, an old glove. I'm gonna oil it up here. So the finger of an old glove, oil that up because this seal I'm sure could get damaged. There, I could feel the threads on there, but it's protected. So once we pass the threads there, we can throw this in the garbage. It looks pretty good, feels good. And now we're just gonna wipe up the, the oil. And I think we can leave a little, leave that little bath of uh, oil and grease in there. Um, and that should ensure that the seal protects contaminations from going up. At this stage here, uh, we should be able to proceed to installing this. What we'll do is we'll get the bottom. So we had that nut. So when I took this apart, the nut had two exposed threads. So I'm gonna kind of move it up a little bit. Okay, so to start, we want the two holes to be parallel with each other. And I've gone and, and made two cotter pins. I've cut some longer cotter pins. Now, for everybody's information, the Yamaha seal has nothing of use written on it, uh, but the dimension is a 10 by 20 by six thick. Um, and this is the SKF part number. So I got an extra one here, $3. Okay, so we're gonna throw this old one in the garbage. All right, so here we go on the reassembly. So I've left the bottom loose for now. We'll tighten that up after when we're aligned. All right, we're gonna proceed to installing this and we put our pin in on the top from the left and then we put our washer and then down below here, same thing. Might have to just adjust the height a little bit and put our washer and then we just put the cotter pins in there loose for now while we make this adjustment. So then we need to grab the cable, which I've got taped up here from, from before because I had to use the blower, so I had to tape it up. Okay, so now we take this cable assembly. So what we're going to do before we tighten the bottom is to, with all the slack at the bottom, get this cable back into the lever and we can just, just make that angle without taking the lever off. Now the cable's secured up here. We stick it through the rubber. You'll want to back the nut all the way back and then have the, the nut and the small washer floating off the end. And then what we're gonna do is stick it through and then get the ball through the cable 
uh, to secure onto the back mechanism here and then tighten up the nut and then the rubber is actually going to sit behind this large washer. So we're going to repeat this now though with the rubber down. Of course when the rubber's down there you can't see what's going on which is awesome. So according to the book this spec is 11 millimeters so right now I've got 10. So what I'll do is I'll just back off this nut. So the nut's backed off. That gives me 11 millimeters. 11 millimeters. So now what you do, let's just try to do it by hand here. Just hold that nut inside. So that gives me now with 12 millimeters, which is what I had before, ironically. So what you'll do now is make sure that inside the cable is passing through the the actuating mechanism and then it's held there. All right guys, two things. So one, I've actually decided to pass this cable on the right side of the cylinder because that's what caused the hole on our front, uh, actually on the rubber. So I'm going to proceed to putting this plate back. So this plate has a little catching slot here. So what you want to do is maybe turn this about this, this angle, push it up. And we see the seal is actually stuck on the bottom there on the thread. So um, push that up, turn it. Now it's going to be uh, hanging up there. And then there's a small lip on this rubber boot. There's actually a, a groove in the rubber just for this plate. So we want to go around and gently kind of expand the rubber and uh, get it sealed up there. All right, so that looks good. And now with this held properly, what I want to do is secure the bottom. So what I'll do is I'll put a crescent on the bottom with a 14 millimeter and keep it straight and then tighten that so it doesn't go anywhere and then finally we're going to do the cotter pins so what we want to do now is test our handiwork seems to work nice all right everybody so hopefully you found this video uh, useful as has been requested many times this uh, height adjustment cylinder seems to give people some grief so Hopefully by getting the bottom seal replaced and doing a bit of a maintenance, cleaning and, and greasing and making sure there's no rough spots on the cylinder that uh, you guys can have yours last some time longer. I thought I might find some compressed gas in there or something, but it's not. It's just a simple clamping mechanism. I'll put the specifications for the seal in the description. And yeah, thanks for watching. Until next time.